Tokyo Ihara and I run Shiki Mania. Right, well, we started Shiki Mania in April of 2014, uh, specializing in ramen. Uh, we've been serving ramen at Shikiji since 2001, but we wanted a ramen-specific restaurant. This one we started uh, just focusing on ramen and ramen only. So my dad's been a chef for a long time. Uh, he had a restaurant in, uh, in Japan as well before we came to Canada. He's actually a French trained rest, uh, chef, uh, but uh, ever since he came here to Canada, uh, he's been doing focusing on Japanese food. Started Shikiji up on 16th and Center Street. And I was there full time pretty much after I graduated uh, university. Yeah, and then now we're, we, we have this going on full time. So I think Japanese food in North America is getting more diverse, and I think people are more open to it. Well, it's changed a lot in the, in the past even like 10 years. Ramen, is, it's like a category on its own, basically, because it's fast food, but it's not junk food, you know? It's fast in the sense that it comes out fast. It takes like literally minutes to prepare, right? But the majority of the work is done before that. So even our soups, we uh, have the broth going for about 16 to 20 hours minimum before we serve it to the customers, you know? Um, ingredients too, like we source like the best ingredients that we can to try and like make the best bowl that we can. I think what makes us a little bit different from other ramen restaurants is that we do make our own noodles. Um, fresh noodles is like makes a huge difference, obviously. Yeah, just the flavor and the, the texture, the two big things in the noodles itself. Yeah, we're trying to perfect that too. At Shiki Menya, we make 150 bowls per day. Uh, we do that because we make our own noodles by hand, and we also make our own soup from scratch. We do it overnight. So uh, that in itself, like once the once the big kettle is gone with the soup, we're we're done for the day. Uh, we do have to turn people away, but for the most part, like people that are waiting, people that are lining up, will definitely get in. We, we make sure that we keep an eye on the people outside. Uh, there's a lot of process, there's a lot of thought that goes in to each, preparing each bowl. And so, yeah, I just want people to be able to enjoy it. Uh, just slurping it up, eating it while it's really, really hot. And then enjoying it like right away. Like that, I, I, think, I think I can't really express that enough, is that you have to have ramen like right away because it's so time sensitive. Like we try to prepare the noodles at, at the prime, you know, prime point when we serve it to our customers. But, you know, some, some people will just like let it sit, let it cool. But essentially, that's like, that's like the same as getting ice cream and waiting for it to melt before you eat it, you know? The plan for the future, I don't know. I mean, we're just trying to focus on one thing at a time. We're just trying to do it the best we can. Hi, my name is Amane, and I'm the manager of Goldfish. I moved here from Tokyo uh, about 13 years ago. I came here for high school, and then I got a scholarship to play uh, soccer for state. So, uh, yeah, ended up staying here for good. <laughs> I basically uh, make sure every customer leaves the restaurant happy. Uh, always coming, uh, working with a chef to come up with the new uh, ideas for the dishes, uh, just to stay current. There are definitely high demand uh, of us. Uh, you know, Kensington location was the original location, but constantly line up, so we have to open up Marta Loop location, and that's gotten busy, and then, then uh, Shinok's location on our opportunity opened up, so uh, definitely we have to pay the people in the South area as well, so. <laughs> so his name is Kobe. He was trained in Japan uh, for many years and went to Vancouver. And then uh, with his uh, PAX knowledge, he brought it in Calgary and uh, obviously ran a very successful restaurant in 2004 called Chopstick and then now Glowfish. And everybody knows about Glowfish now. So, <laughs> A lot of people actually think sushi is uh, you know, raw fish, but sushi doesn't mean raw fish. 
and you know you can mix uh, any fresh ingredients, uh, any cooked stuff, vegetables. It's almost like it's healthy, you know. It almost looks like a, like art form, you know. So and then plus it looks good visually and it's actually good for you. I like sashimi. I just like fish itself, you know, super fresh. I mean. Uh, especially at the Globefish, uh, we go through so much amount of fish. I tell my customers, hey, our uh, sushi is sort of like uh, Tim Hortons coffee. You know, we go through so much amount that we always have a fresh fish. So I, I just love our fresh fish here. Yeah, the, we are specialized in special unique rolls that you can find in Calgary. Uh, for example, we got uh, two of the special role named after athletes, like uh, Calgary Flames player named uh, Curtis Glencross. Uh, he's assistant captain there now, and he's a regular customer of ours, and uh, we uh, name a role after him. So uh, basically, him and his wife made uh, ingredients inside, and then we kind of tweaked a bit. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, crispy dynamite roll topped with like fresh assorted sashimi. And uh, Drew Tatero, he's a uh, Calgary Stampeders quarterback. And he, again, he's a regular customer of ours. So um, yeah, we uh, n name a roll after him as well. So it is, uh, again, it was inspired and created by him. But the, it's just the ingredients why it was just uh, something different from what we had, so. Well, uh, <laughs> well, like I said, uh, you know, there's a definitely something for everybody. So I would love them to uh, experience the great experience, like a traditional and also contemporary experience that, uh, that nobody else would offer in Calgary. My name is Neoya Yumino and the, uh, I'm a owner chef of the other sushi bar Zipang. I started to be cutting the, uh, the fish when I was 13 years old, as of the uh, next door neighbor of the, uh, the other fish store back in Yokohama, Japan. And the, uh, ever since then, like, you know, that's how I started. That's how I get into the, uh, the other fish industry. Then the, uh, I, was, I came to Edmonton when I, when I was 17. Then I moved down here in 1995 uh, as a post-secondary student at SAIC. I took to the business management at the other SAIC. Well, my background of the, uh, the, uh, this job or the, uh, the, this cuisine, like a Japanese cuisine itself, is the, uh, the, the nothing but the fish. So I do mostly serving the other fish. Like I don't do the other lots of rolls and things like that. I do I do more be like a dealing with fish more than anything else. I don't try to be differentiate with the uh, any other Japanese restaurant out there. I try to be care with the other people. Like I try to be make sure like they're having the other good time. And the uh, only thing I do here is the. Uh, I'm an old school guy, so I just do whatever I need to do. You know, the main character of the, uh, the, 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 this restaurant, or the, the Japanese cuisine, or like sushi restaurant itself, is the, uh, the, the fish is the, 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 the main purpose of the uh, main dish of the, uh, the, uh, the, the food. So that's how I try to be supporting that. You know, the, the, my way of cooking is the uh, Shinto, which is the uh, sun, mountain, and water. So is we have the high spot go towards the lower spot. Then the other we put the car into it. So if you see my dish, then they usually have like you know like high spot on the other left hand side corner. My philosophy to cooking is the uh, pretty much like your mothers. You know the, uh, the 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 mother out there is like make sure just you know they're feeding the, uh, the right food to the right personnel. It's like make sure the other, you know, the food is on the table, right time, right spot, and the, uh, make sure the other guests will be enjoying that. So that's what I try to be doing that. Well, if you're looking for fish, just try out. That's, that's only I can say, you know, like a fish and the, uh, like a traditional product. Personally, I don't want it to be open up second location or like I don't want it to go big or anything like that. 
you know, 50, 50 seating capacity restaurants here are pretty much maximum for me. What we have is what we have, and what we got is what we got. So, you know, I just wanted to be concentrated. Whoever comes into that door, then put the, like a big smile on the other face and let them, you know, let them have the other good time. Hi, my name is Peter Kinjo. I'm the owner and the founder of Kinjo Sushi and Grill. Uh, I'm from Japan. We have a very um, historical country. We have a great food, great culture. And uh, I want to introduce to the North American people Japanese food and culture and the Japanese hospitality. This all together, I believe that we can open 100 stores. And uh, sushi is very popular nowadays. Yeah, so one day, North America, we can serve lots of people. That's my dream. Japanese hospitality meaning is, we want every customer so happy, and we want to be very generous, that's why I give away a lot of things, and we want to make them want to feel like, uh, oh, today was a good day, and i like to come back. And I believe it, if I make a customer happy, an employee happy, we can grow as much as we can. I believe it, um, best service meaning is, a customer feel they gain something. It's a good deal. So I try to make make best deal in a town than any other restaurants. I love Walmart because they, they have a system how to make a customer happy. I like to make the uh, margin each customer smaller as much as I can, but I want to make big, big customer base. I think Kinjo is more uh, same standard every time because we use the machines and we use a, a system. But Kinjo is every time we try to make same quality and the same price. Only uh, quantity come to be quality. When you have a big, big sales, then you have money to make better service, healthy service, uh, and a safe food. Japanese hospitality is, you know, always we are bow and we are greeting people, we smile. I said, Irashiai Mase meaning, in the Kinjo meaning is, we've been waiting for you since last night. I'm so glad to see you. We've been happy to serve you and make you so enjoyable. Busy day, we sing 30, 40 times. And when we sing a song, minimum 10 people. And all my staff, they must pass the singing test, 11 song, and half Japanese, half English. <laughs> my dream is a hundred stores, doesn't matter what. I was uh, promised myself, before I die, I want to open hundred stores. So still continue to follow my hundred stores uh, dream. And I'm a 62, but I feel like 18. I think I can do it. <laughs> and I'm so excited every day. You know, like, like a Nintendo game. Every day, I'm thinking about it and uh, excited about it, and uh, every day I'm happy. And then one day, I give away my share to the company when I die, and then company existing forever because it's, I'm a biggest shareholder, and then nobody, this company don't have to pay the dividend to anybody. We have, we have a passion to make a customer happy. And uh, I wish you enjoy the uh, Kinjo hospitality, service, food, price, and atmosphere. I love you, Calgary. Thank you, Calgary. <laughs>
Uh, I'm from Osaka and coming to Canada 2003 and I started the Hapa Izakaya in Vancouver for 11 years and I'm moving to Calgary last year and opened the restaurant here. Uh, <laughs> I was training in Tokyo, a small Izakaya restaurant, uh, five years and I'm coming to uh, Vancouver. I was 10 years in Hapa Izakaya. I was inspired with my mom to be, become a chef. I think it's most important is the love <coughs> to put in the food, because my mom <coughs> makes lots of lovely food to us, so it's a basic for my My favorite dish is uh, yaki udon. It's uh, udon, no soup, and pan fried. Uh, my favorite dish to prepare is a sashimori, it's a assorted sashimi, it's a big plate. Uh, yes, what the chefs do, uh, absolutely, it's art. Um, and I think uh, my biggest job is to uh, show people that the, uh, that side of them, um, a lot of the dishes come out. I've been in this industry for a few years now and they still surprise me at how amazing and beautiful they can, uh, they can create these dishes. Hapa is a Japanese restaurant, but uh, I'm always thinking mixing Japanese and Canadian or anything else. Every, anytime I'm thinking the mix. What makes Hapa different is that we are not afraid to play with uh, traditional dishes. We've, we've always kept kind of a fun atmosphere and I think uh, in the cuisine it's definitely reflected and uh, I think our guests definitely get that, uh, that experience. Izakaya, it literally means a place to come and eat and drink. And so it kind of came out of the, uh, the beer halls of Tokyo. Um, sort of a place that people could forget about the, uh, the hierarchy in Japan and kind of more focus on having fun and letting loose. Izakaya is uh, almost small dishes and sharing plate. Uh, it's a, a drinks place with a good tapas the main philosophy is sort of tapas style and so things that uh, encourage people to be social and share and uh, everyone gets to experience a few different dishes that, that way. Hapa Izakaya is not just sushi restaurant. We're here to have fun, we're here to enjoy some drinks together, uh, share some food. Uh, it's all about that, that communal kind of experience and uh, I think once people get that they'll, they'll definitely start enjoying Hapa a lot more. Party praise, <laughs> drinking, more fun. <laughs> My name is David Lee, I'm the general manager here at Zen 8 Grill. Uh, Zen 8 Grill here is a concept from Penny Lane Entertainment where we're encompassing a lot of different Asian foods, not necessarily just Japanese, where we're focusing on the Pacific Rim as well as our main focus, the teppanyaki. We're here to be a multi-entertainment venue. We're trying to emulate what Vegas is doing. You know, we get customers that go to the casino, and then the casino gets customers that come in for dinner. And so it's a symbiotic relationship that we have. You come in one day for an anniversary dinner, and you'll come in the next day with a group of friends and party it up, and we throw a great party. Or you can come in on another day with your business group, and we can do a five-course tasting menu for you. And that's something I don't believe any other restaurant does. Uh, I believe the, the appeal of Japanese cuisine and most Asian foods in general is the simplicity of the foods. Uh, a lot of fresh ingredients, a lot of brightness to the dishes, and a lot of uh, technique. The chefs and the cooks, they take great pride in their dishes and each individual piece that they place on the plate. Uh, our head chef Takao was trained in Japan for a number of years. 
worked as a teppanyaki chef and as an executive chef there. And we were lucky enough to get him for a restaurant here. restaurant has two very, very popular dishes. Um, the first is obviously our teppanyaki. It's our best seller. People love seeing our chef cook in front of them and do his teppanyaki tricks that he's trained for and with the fire show. And our second is a deep fried sushi roll that we call the rock and roll, which has salmon, tuna, avocado. And it's battered in tempura and then deep fried for a few moments. I don't necessarily think that you have to be Japanese to fully understand it, but I do believe you need to be trained in Japan or under a Japanese chef to fully understand their passion for their cuisine. Um, for instance, some of the best chefs in the world, they're not necessarily from the region that they cook in, but they've trained in some of the best restaurants and under the best chefs. So they also develop the same passion and understanding of knowledge for the food that they're preparing. We have really good food, really good service, so come for dinner and stay for the party. Hi, my name is Chef George Kita, and we're here at Key Modern Japanese and Bar. Well, funny enough, one day back in high school, um, my mom was working in a restaurant, and then they were short a dishwasher. So they asked me to come in one day, and then it pretty much all started from there. I was fortunate enough to train under one of the best sushi chefs in Canada, Yoshi Tabo. And then one day he, I asked him if I could do sushi and he kind of looked at me with like a squirt on his face and he reluctantly said yes. Well, I've been doing sushi for around 20 years and still I don't consider myself to be a master by all means. We go to great lengths to bring the best quality fish in possible. We get them flown in three times a week. We offer bluefin tuna belly also, we get our sockeye salmon is from Johnson Strait in British Columbia. It's much more fattier and tastes way better than the Alaskan salmon. Um, Japanese cooking, generally, we like to keep things simple and just let the ingredients itself do the talking and just accompany it with like very light sauces. Well, every dish, perfection, I strive for perfection. Yes, encourage customers to drink wine or sake along with their meal. And we do have a vast arrangement of sake here at Key. Well, I would like to encourage everybody to give Key a try because we have something for everybody here.
Hi, my name is Mio and welcome to Misato. Misato means in Japanese, um, Mi is beautiful and then Sato means home village. The philosophy here is the warm feeling that you get when you dine with friends, families, loved ones. And we try and keep it, I guess, kind of a personal experience. So our head chef is Yukio Fujimoto, he's from Japan. He has more than 30 years experience in Japanese foods. He originally trained at the Tsuji Academy of Cooking and Confectionery and he worked his skills, worked his way up and was lead chef for the Terasaki Shokuhin Sangyo Company and he was working there until about 2008 and finally moved to Calgary, worked in many famous uh, Japanese restaurants and now he's with us, finally. <laughs> I think for Japanese cuisine, it hits all five senses. I mean, you hear the sizzling of the teriyaki, you smell the food, the different textures that you get, the crunch of the tempura, the smoothness of the fish, and of course, the presentation. You see everything, it's just artistic. I think Masada is different from other restaurants, just it's more on the traditional side as well as that homey feeling that we try and aim for. I think our most popular items as well as probably the most unique items that we have is the Calgary Special Roll. It's, it's a giant roll, it's probably about my palm size, it's got assorted sashimi inside as well as the imitation crab meat, shrimp, avocado, lettuce, mayo. And then on the outside it has the smoked salmon and it's beautifully presented. Um, we also have the spicy roll which is made with an original recipe. It's um, a miso based sauce. We also have I think soba noodles which is kind of unique compared to other places. Um, we serve it hot as well as cold. The Zara Soba and the Ten Zara Soba, I don't think you find many places in Calgary. What I'd like people to know is how it tastes, I guess. It's really, really close to what you get in Japan and that home cooking for me especially. Um, it's really similar to my mom's cooking too. <laughs> It's hard for me to say what my favorite thing is just because everything is so good. I would recommend just ordering from the menu top to bottom. Take your time. Maybe once a week come in. <laughs>